and welcome back to Jim's Farming. since my last video um, been pretty busy with lambing and to be honest I've really felt like doing any uh, any filming or anything like that it's uh, been doing night on the night shift and um, yeah it's just a bit hectic so that's why there hasn't been a, a video for a while but we're very nearly finished um, you should hopefully be seeing plenty of Lambs are being turned out in the next next few uh, weeks, months, uh, a few other things going on. And I'm just out now on the sprayer, just been and washed it out. Uh, this is our ryegrass that's grown back quite well, showing we should have probably grazed it a little bit. And the other day I sprayed it off with Roundup. So just out with the sprayer now, just giving it a wash out, rinse out because We've got some herbicides to go on the wheat and a fungicide to go on the oilseed rape and I don't want to uh, kill it off with glyphosate. So I thought it might be a good opportunity now just to run you through my auto steer, open ag auto steer setup. So one project which I've been working on the last few weeks through lambing is an RTK base station. Uh, I now have that up and running and I'll sort of show you a bit of the progression of that and I'll also give you a bit of a in-depth look at how I've got my auto steer set up. It's not quite there, I just need a bit more time and hopefully I should just tidy it up as time goes on, but it's one of those things, it works, I can get on with it. So, had some good results with it in the autumn, on the cultivator, on the drill, uh, I've been using it with the sprayer, the section control probably gets used more than anything else with the sprayer, uh, works great. Um, so yeah, without further ado, we'll have a look. That there is my antenna with the grain plane. Um, could probably put it a little bit higher. As you can see, there's a bit of a blind spot with the house there. And you can actually see that on the map, um, which shows the satellites that the antenna can view. See that's the ground plane up there. Um, but actually all around here, apart from that kind of little section of sky, there's fantastic visibility and I'm getting about 30 satellites in view. So it's not doesn't seem to be a massive issue at the moment. Uh, probably in the summer I might reevaluate the position of that. Uh, I think for the moment when I'm gonna be drilling beans on this field and another field uh, we'll just leave it as it is. This is the brains behind the base station. Uh, got it mounted up in the slightly messy garage. I uh, need to tidy this cable up, that's to the antenna. Uh, got a, had a USB cable going to the receiver just to configure that so I need to take that off. Uh, so that's the unit now in its kind of finished form. So I managed to lose some screws uh, on the line. Right, so we have here printed circuit board. Uh, we'll come to that shortly. Um, we have the RG Simple uh, F9P RTK to B U blocks unit. Um, 
and we have ESP32 that is uh, basically capable of trans connecting, transmitting Wi-Fi. A uh, little LCD screen, various connectors, switches. So you listed the boot mode. That's power for the ESP. That's power for the whole board. Uh, I've also got in a Ethernet W5500 um, connector. It's epoxied in, nice and sealed up. Uh, got a little um, lead in here, extender for the antenna, coax cable. Um, power supply in the bottom. That's five volts in, and a reset button, or not a reset button, sorry, and a, a little push button to put it into a configuration mode. So, um, I got this to this to its current form with quite a bit of help from ESPRTK. I'll stick the website up. Um, so, they provide a yeah some kind of software firmware code to upload onto this there is a small charge for it but uh from what it's offering it seems seems pretty good um and yeah i got a website um a bunch of tutorials that you can go through how to put it together scroll down i think it's that one so they have here uh Supposedly this unit here will actually output the right messages for Trimble and Topcom um, Which might be useful for some people um, uh, Loads of information on the website uh, Like I say um, Been very helpful in getting it together. Uh, there's a guy Darren Lobb. He's he's put out a pretty good video good video of actually assembling uh, a um, Auto steer board and also a bit of video back putting one of these together. Uh, he said he ran into some power issues. Um, I find it's okay with a short cable, short 5 volt cable, but if I try and put a bit of an extension on, it does tend to, this unit here keeps restarting. But now I'm putting it in a different location, that's not going to be an issue. So that's that video there. And just scroll down. You can see here. Uh, some circuit diagrams. So, let's look for RG Simple. It's that one there. So, I use this here. Uh, so, I use that circuit, that sort of schematic circuit diagram to put together this. This is on Easy EDA. Uh, if anybody's interested, I can uh, point make this available to them. Um, essentially, just that's ESP32 with all the connections linked up. You've got the um, connector there for the Ethernet module. Uh, power supply is the um, RG Simple unit. Switches, buzzer, a little OLED display. And from that, with this uh, online software designer. I drew out this circuit board plan. So that's got everything in it. All the tracings on two sides. A um, couple of connectors there you can see on there. And yeah, so sent the sent off for these online. And I think it's about 20 quid with postage for five of them. Uh, got a few going spare, although there are a few issues. Um, that resistor there R3 isn't actually supposed to be there <laughs> that was at stake um, and that IO ref should be connected to 3.3 volts so I had to wire in uh, solder in a wire and there's a 3.3 supply on top of the RG simple board uh, before I got to that I started off with this pro site board um, so that's got all the header connections and switches LEDs, power supply, and looks a bit messy, but yeah, a bit of wire and solder just to make sure it all worked. So, just thought I'd get this printed out to uh, just tidy everything up. Uh, did have another minor issue. Uh, there's a little track there going to that error 
LED on this side. You can see it's not connected. Uh, somehow overlooked it on that plan. Uh, I traced that out. Uh, so I just need to put that right ready. Okay, so that is now fixed. If that gets sent off, that'll be perfect. But it's quite an easy fix. It was just a case of scraping a bit of the uh, track off and putting some solder. It's only a tiny little gap. It did take a little while to diagnose that. So if I just plug in a micro USB cable to the SP32. Um, we should come to life. So you can see it's starting up, loading the ROM. Um, the ball breaks the connections, and you can see Enfrit Caster, that's the mode it's running in. Uh, it can also uh, work with RTK to go, which is how I was getting my correction signal before using someone else's. Um, I haven't actually tried setting that up. Uh, it was quite took quite a while to get this right, and I did have to did need quite a bit of support from ES, ESP RTK uh, to get there in the end, but very helpful. I won't go into that because the video will go on forever. Uh, it's currently giving me an error because we're not connected to an antenna. So if I just press this, I'll put it into configure mode. It starts flashing and it will create its own little hotspot which I can connect to with the laptop. So if I just, just connect it to that, if I just put in the IP address and see profile there and we come up to this page here and just need to log in login name and through this um, here we can control everything basically internet and how it connects all sorts of stuff like that um, the caster settings position settings all sorts so um, yeah uh, all the messages that it sticks out and um, whatever mode you want it in you can it'll work with radio um, as well as entrip uh, which is entrips over over the internet and yeah once I've finished that I can just click on that and we are back in main mode see all the simple antenna mounted on the roof so back to my auto steer demonstration uh, had to duck out earlier so all I do pop that up into there engages the wheel gonna make sure that one's pressed and then I press that button don't want the section control on and obviously make sure my auto steer box is on and it is connected if I didn't do that so, it's currently set to put the uh, section control on when that steers in, and then we're off. I do find with this tractor with the sprayer on, because it's quite, it's a little bit back heavy, there's not really enough weight on the front, it does wander a little bit, and I've just got to adjust the uh, position of that steering motor but as you can see we're on RTK and we are just within a couple of mil uh, or centimeters even of the AB line on the uh, John Deere 6230 and pretty simple setup here for the uh, steering wheel drive steering wheel motor there just mounted on a pretty basic bracket as you can see could probably do with a lick of paint there's a bit of rust on it very Heath Robinson just a um, uh, Jubilee clip type thing there holding the motor on it is a remote controlled car wheel 
and it just engaged pretty much by pulling that lever and putting the steering wheel against it. Works great, we'll have a bit of a demo very shortly. So we've got a mesh of wires, got a fuse there in line for that. Um, that goes down to my auto steer controller there. So that's plumbed in, wires everywhere, it's a bit of a state this cab. Uh, got a button here that activates the auto steer, if I press that you can see that will go green. Uh, Ag Open GPS has just had an update, so I think it's version 5.5 maybe, I'm not sure. Um, so what's really good now, this button, when I engage the auto steer, will engage the auto section control. So you can see here, I have RTK. And it is my own RTK, furthermore, which is uh, quite exciting. So I've been working on that, but we will come to that shortly. We have here my uh, section control controller, which is wired into my John Deere spray controller. So if I just put a bit of power on, uh, we've got some LEDs there that are linked in. So if I flick the switch here, they will do that. But they'll also come on when the sections are put on so if I just if I tap that that's manual control there we go and you can tap those individually to turn them off pop 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 there we go that's section control off it also makes a noise now on this new version which is good so uh, yeah all connected by USB we've got a USB which comes from this uh, unit down here into there uh, got my RG Simple F9P uh, RTK to be board in there. Uh, the that's the GPS receiver. Also USB connected. This is also USB connected. And um, yeah, pretty much it. Just now have a look. This is a steering angle sensor. Um, do you need to replace that there? That's uh, gonna start eating in there. Um, very simple. Made up a little bracket. Go around the other side. little bracket a little bit of angle line uh, just clamped onto the axle and then a little uh, kind of u-bolt clamped on there a little bolt welded in the middle and that just fits in there um, that is yeah La Land Rover suspension height uh, sensor very was very cheap I think I have broken one it takes a bit of doing to get the geometry right uh, so it doesn't yank off or get caught on that it actually got caught on our old John Deere when I was drilling this field and broke off um, but yeah so that connects in there they I think I think I bought two for like 20 quid off eBay but looking recently they have gone up in price so that was just a bit of trial and error getting position right getting the geometry right but uh, not too bad really plastic but pretty robust pretty cheap to replace and then that goes I've got to put some braid over a three uh, three core cable that runs up look what's in here as well did actually have that stuck down with some velcro but it's pulled off not the tidiest solution but uh means it can come on and off pretty easy that there was a bit of a mistake um that drill the hole out too much for that little grommet so i'll just slide that off you can see here the guts of the steering module um got the arduino in there uh, there's an analog digital converter which is for steer angle um, there's a Cytron here, which is the motor driver. I've uh, got a fuse in there for the power supply, so that comes straight from 12 volts in the tractor. And then we've got the BN0085 there, which gives you kind of the tilt. Uh, it's the IMU, and sort of combines with the GPS to give an accurate heading. Uh, I believe they're now like hen's teeth and quite difficult to get hold of. But yeah, got a bunch of connectors, circular connectors in the back. Uh, USB coming off the back of the Arduino. There we go. So just one more quick look. I didn't really mention much about this. I did just point it out, but um, just needs a bit more of a tidy up in the box. Uh, so this little module is what controls, as I said before, the section control. Um, we've got five sections, and it's all controlled by this Arduino down here. Um, and that is connected to these relays, so this little relay module of which I'm using five. And pretty simple, that's just basically hacked in 
um, and I've wired it into these switches just to uh, so they essentially just bypass these switches I can still control it myself it won't map on the screen but um, if I want to manually put them on I can do it with that uh, pretty simple really that's like I say that's probably the most useful thing uh, gets used the most I don't always use it with the steering angle motor and this that lives on this tractor really and uh, yeah it's proven to be probably the best thing about the system but it tees in with the whole uh, sort of seeding uh, with the RTK and getting my spacings right when I'm tram lining so uh, and to be fair everything I've done in the autumn got a tiny little bit of overlap which is what I like uh, to make sure I'm getting full coverage and uh, yeah so uh, that's that is that go too much into uh, how I have to set this up um, it's quite a bit on the tutorials online uh, and it but it, it did it did take a bit of doing um, dealing with IP addresses router settings um, and port forwarding and things like that I have limited knowledge of these things but I've somehow bumbled my way through it uh, but yeah it does work and you know I think probably this unit here like the switch itself um, that unit there is the most expensive uh, thing in the system don't plug it um, at about 250 quid with an antenna um, ESP32 there that is about 10 quid um, that's probably less than 300 quid in, invested here or thereabouts with all the little components a few resistors and capacitors and little buzzers and switches so yeah RTK base station for 300 quid basically uh, no ongoing subscriptions or anything like that which is pretty good and uh, I'll probably you know, I've got to have another one of those uh, receiver units uh, on the rover on the tractor that you know really that's the the, for the steering setup and the section control I think that's been done for with a tablet it's probably one of the more expensive items as well it's all been done for probably under a thousand pounds so yeah uh, probably 1200 quid I've got a at the most um, I've got a you know fully functioning RTK set up with like I say no ongoing cost so yeah if anyone's got any questions um, feel free to ask me uh, drop me a message drop me a comment and um, I'm more than happy to ask uh, to help people out if they need pointing in the right direction um, if I can do it I think probably anyone can if you you know you can hold a soldering iron uh, follow some instructions there's loads of information available on the Ag Open GPS um, forum um, ESP32 they've been really helpful uh, getting everything set up and yeah you know I can't really take any just I can't take any credit for too much credit for it and uh, there's some really clever people out there uh, Brian who invented the uh, Ag Open GPS and um, and there's some also some other, other very clever people on the uh, out there who've who've made it all happen. So thank you for watching. Uh, kind of a long video today. Hope you've anyone who's interested has found some bits of it useful. Like I said, if any questions, feel free to ask. And I'll catch you again for another episode of Jim's Farming.